What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we're up in the Northwoods. That is Lake Superior behind us, chasing smallmouth. So today's video, we're gonna be throwing crankbaits, swim baits, do some finesse fishing. So come along as we fish Lake Superior for smallmouth. All right guys, we are not off to a good start. Just wanna keep it real with you guys. <laughs> We're about, I don't know, 17 hours into the drive, made it here, and uh, had some boat issues. It's always something, right? Break out another thousand, is that what boat stands yeah, for? Yeah, that's what boat stands but, for. But uh, luckily we got MacGyver back here. He did some uh, rewiring, so. Um, you know you're in good shape when any bass fishing trip starts with a five pound hammer. <laughs> got the sledgehammer, <laughs> some screwdrivers, and some electrical tape, but hopefully everything uh, works and doesn't catch fire Hopefully. and we no, we're good now we're rigged <laughs> we're ready to go fishing we're just not on that first light bite anymore yeah so uh, obviously keeping it real with you guys but uh, let's go catch some fish Baron over here is the wood you can see the wood I'm thinking <laughs> He's so mad. We're on the board. So we are still at the boat ramp. We haven't even gone anywhere. But I was rigging up rods. And Tim said, man, there's fish swimming by. So we stood up, started casting at the boat ramp. But got a Lake Superior smallmouth in the boat on the dark sleeper. No surprise there, one of our favorite things to do. When we're up here chasing these smallmouth. Somewhere down in that gullet is a dark sleeper. Wow. Beautiful fish. That's awesome. My poor thing. Sure is. <laughs> Just take care of him. If he's still around, I'll get him. Oh, oh, oh that's a nice fish. That is my first ever Lake Superior smallmouth, and it's a nice one. <laughs> That's cool. It's just a pretty fish. Thanks, bud. All right, we were off to a rough start this morning. We had wiring gremlins we had to hunt down to get everything working right. And then I let my boat sit for a few weeks. Tim and I went down to Florida and took his boat. Then I flew to California. So we finally got that running, got the boat in the water, started the outboard, 
and there was no water coming out of the outboard, a mud dauber had gone up and built a nest in there. So we got that cleaned out. We caught a couple of fish. If we were smart, we'd probably stay right here at the ramp and just keep catching them. But here's the deal. This afternoon, we are slated for mega wind. And this is Lake Superior. This isn't just a great lake. This is, this is that great lake. This is where the five and six and 700 foot ships go down. So it's not gonna blow like that today, but we wanna run out to some areas that aren't protected while we can, because I think we've probably only got a few hours to do any sort of real exploring. And then we'll either be fishing protected water or we'll put it on the trailer. When you go to the Great Lakes, and in this case, we only have today to be here, uh, you just know that weather can throw you a curveball. We're surprised we even got to come out at all on the big water. I mean, to be here for one day and to have it slick enough to pull it off is pretty awesome. So let's run out, let's fish some big water. And we'll see what happens. All right, guys, we're running around trying to figure this uh, big body of water out, but we've come across a shipwreck. We looked it up, it's a 195 foot ship, the Lucerne that sunk in 1886. Um, got some pretty cool footage, underwater footage. Hopefully it shows up, but uh, thing is massive, 195 feet. Uh, you can still see a lot of the ship down there. Can't really see any smallmouth down there, but um, really cool to come across a piece of history like that. To see a ship that big is, um, it's pretty, pretty mind blowing. It's see pretty it, sobering see too. It on the bottom. But, Today's uh, nice and calm, but. Yeah, you can yeah. see out here, this is Lake Superior, hundreds of miles that way. There's no shore. Uh, just really, really cool. Saw it on the Lake Master chip and ran out here and uh, fished it and then got a real good look underwater with it. Uh, pretty fascinating. It's pretty fascinating. All right, let's get back to trying to catch some fish. see her swimming on the sand. She ran out of room. You went top on her? That's what I was picking up before. Got it. The one on the back, the blonde one, was big. A pound bigger than the other one. Oh! oh! Still there. She's going to do it. Oh my gosh. She's on it, she's on it. It's not walking. They're both on it. Now they're on you. Now coming back at you. Monster blow ups. Wow. <laughs> Dude, that's a big one. Big water. 
not protected by a harbor topwater fish. I'm gonna net this one for you. Oh, golly. <laughs> nice fish, man. <laughs> See if his friend is still out there. Hooks everywhere. Good job, man. Thanks, man. Such a nice fish. Awesome. Beautiful fish. Look how tall that fish is. Got that shower blows. You and those bone top waters for small mouth. Every time. How you didn't get cut off, because he's got it down. There he goes. Yikes. <laughs> this dude straight got my sleeper choked. fish dark sleeper choked anytime I'm gonna be on that big water it is hard to get that sleeper out of my hand it's the three inch half ounce because dark sleepers come in all sorts of different sizes and weights three inch half ounce or three inch and three quarter ounce those two are sort of the my bread and butter. That's where I spend the vast majority of my time. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> it's 
It's like magic. They just eat it. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Another one on the top water. Throwing that shower blows 105. So much fun when they're eating the top water. All pilings over there too. Calm down. Get over here. There were other boats in the parking lot this morning, but they sure act like they've never seen a bait before. Every one of them is fighting for their life. So much fun. This fish, I threw the dark sleeper out in the open and he caught it. I hadn't even engaged the spool yet. And then he got me down in some rock or some wood or something. There's all sorts of debris out here on this flat. So I just slowed down, stopped pulling, just kept a tight line and he swam his way out of that snag. Nice. I was on a mission this morning. You know, you always come out with a plan in your head. I wanted jerkbait fish, but I always have a dark sleeper tied on. They started out eating that sleeper. The conditions just weren't right for the jerkbait. It was so slick, calm, and the water's so clear. But now that the wind's blowing, I've picked it up a couple of times. I had one really light bite. You got him? Yeah, big one. Big one? One light bite on the jerk bait, and it was actually a nice fish. It followed it up, but it's pretty obvious. Oh. They want to eat the dark sleeper today. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we're a disaster. You got him? Oh, definitely. No. <laughs> I'll lift him. Make it. That was one of those, uh, nope, don't do that. <laughs> oh, definitely big fish of the day by quite a bit. So I don't know if you guys could see that when Matt was talking, I got smashed. That's a big one. That's a big uh, one. I got smashed, swung and missed, flipped back out there and it ate it almost as soon as it hit the water. So cool. <laughs>
another nice fish. Look at that thing. Hate that sleeper. You know, we fished all over this place. Now we're just kind of running and gunning and looking for shallow water with, with grass. Yeah, this is not a complicated pattern. Anybody could have replicated this today. Yeah, we're just running around looking for grass. And uh, we could see. What do you call the sleeper? The control bait? The control bait. Yeah, you know, we were trying to catch them on so many other things. You know, I was really trying to catch them on top water. Matt was really trying to catch them on a jerk bait. But sometimes you can't. Can't, can't catch, catch anything, anything else. So what we're doing is pulling up to a spot and checking it with the control bait, the dark sleeper, to make sure there's fish there and then see if we can get them to eat other things. But uh, I think we'll just keep force feeding them that, uh, that sleeper because it seems to be working. Um, choked it man that just never gets old I love chasing smallmouth all right guys we're gonna wrap it up here but I want to leave you with a couple of things uh, first like every video down in the video description we'll link all the baits all the gear uh, we caught them on basically a topwater and a dark sleeper. We caught them on that Shower Blows 105 um, and the, the three inch dark sleeper, but we threw a bunch of different stuff at them. Um, but we also played with a bunch of different gear that we don't always throw today. So we had a bunch of fun on the water. So I'll link all that stuff for you. But the other couple of things I wanna leave you with is one, we are on one of the largest freshwater lakes in the world. And you don't need to be intimidated by these places. You can come out and catch fish. You can do it. I mean, we dropped the boat into one of the biggest lakes there is and literally caught fish in front of the boat ramp and then ran around and caught a bunch of fish, built a pattern, uh, fishing obvious stuff, stuff we could see with our eyes uh, and started catching fish. So don't be intimidated by these places. Now, <laughs> what I do want to leave you with, however, is the importance of respecting these places. Respect the weather, respect the size of the water. So we've been on the water for six hours today and we're calling it quits. Tim is officially sticking our last fish right now. It's a pike. Uh, is it a pike? Yeah. Not because we want to end our day, Thanks, bud. Oh, 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 no, over, over no. Oh, we're not. <laughs> Come here, nice. Say hi. So we're ending it not because we want to call it quits when we had one day and we only spent six hours, but because we had watched the forecast. So we ran a long ways. We ran more than half a tank of gas today. Uh, and the part I want to leave you with is that we started working our way back to the boat ramp before 
the wind even kicked up. Now you can't tell there's wind because we're right back by the ramp and we're completely protected by a tree line here. But we left way offshore while it was still glass because the forecast said if we stayed, we would be in trouble. And sure enough, halfway back in, we started hitting that great big chop. Those big waves were building, leaving this bay headed out and we were out there. Um, so we timed it perfectly. We were able to get back into the bay, back up here where it's protected uh, without any issues whatsoever. But we did so by leaving our area, even though visibly everything was still fine. Uh, and it's just, I can't stress enough how important it is that if you come out to these places, you can do it safely, you can have a blast, you can catch big fish, you can catch a lot of fish, but you need to do it with respect. Respect for the fish, respect for the weather, and respect for that giant body of water, and you'll have a great time. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.